starte så vi skal prøve. Ja, det er I'm ready. I'd like to welcome everybody to Fairhaven's Veterans Day ceremony and thank you all for appearing here. We really need it. It's been uh, three parades that we've missed during a pandemic. 
And I know that everybody behind me has been happy to really march and come out today, especially on such a beautiful day. Today is special because it marks the 100th anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. In 1921, three soldiers from a French cemetery had American soldiers interred there, and they were exhumed and put in three caskets. And a young sergeant was chosen to pick one of the three to be shipped back to the United States. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier was commissioned then by Warren Harding, president at the time. And since then, they've had a sentry there protecting that. Through all our wars, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, right, there's been a soldier in term there, with the exception of Vietnam because of the advent of DNA, they were able to identify the uh, Air Force pilot that was there, and he was removed. Also, anybody that's been was born after 1948, every second of every day right, that you've been alive, there's been a sentinel marching and protecting the tomb of the unknown soldier through any weather, inclement and not. We'd like to thank all the veterans that have served, the ones that have sacrificed supreme, and all the veterans behind me right, for your independence, your liberty, and your freedom. God bless you. And an inscription on the tomb in the front. Here lies an American soldier, honored and gloried, known only to God. Thank you. I'd like to call up Larry Jones, Senior Chief, to read the Veterans Day prayer. Larry. Let us pray. Come on. Come on. Almighty God, today on Veterans Day, we pause to honor the valor and sacrifice of all who served in the armed forces of our great nation. Those who served in a time of peace and those who bravely fought in a time of war. We thank you for your selfless service of those who gave their lives of liberties and freedoms we enjoy today. Grant relief to those who continue to experience emotional or physical agony for their days of combat. Give us a grateful nation, a sense of responsibility of their warfare. Comfort those families and friends who mourn for loved ones who died while performing their duties to this country. We recognize and appreciate their sacrifice. We share their loss. Oh, gracious God, we commend you on your care in keeping all the men and women of our armed forces serving at home abroad today, especially in places of risk. Defend them day by day. Give them strength and courage to face the dangers they encounter. Bless them, keep them safe, and bring them home. Amen. Thank you, Larry. Recall. I would now like to call Devin Robital, commander of Kushnet VFW. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Am I loud enough? All right, cool. No. How about now? If I pick this up? Is that better? OK. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming today. Before we do anything, before I say anything, can I just, I want to pay attention to the folks who carried the flag for the entire parade. That was incredible. So let's give those folks a round of applause. That was, that's not an easy, an easy task. Um, and also, I just want to give you guys a round of applause. I'm so happy to be here. Two years ago, I stood here doing the same exact thing, and I'm so glad that we all get to do it again. So thank you for having me here today. Um, as a proud sister, niece, cousin, friend, 
sister-in-law, and most importantly, daughter of a veteran, the opportunity to speak at these events is truly humbling. Not to mention, like I said, it's the first time since we've had a parade since 2019, so this is just amazing. Um, as I was putting my thoughts together last night as to what I was going to say, a, a true pro born procrastinator, I waited till last night, um, I thought, what do I say? How can I relate to everyone in the crowd? And then it all came to me. While I was a sergeant in the U.S. Army, my favorite leaders taught me, never ask one of your soldiers to do something that you aren't willing to do yourself or have not already done. This always resonated with me. You can't just tell somebody to do something if you're not willing to do it alongside of them. I've been the, co the commander of the VFW Thomas E. Tuttle Post 7239 in Akushnet for three years, and it has been a beautiful adventure and eye-opening experience. One of my favorite parts of the VFW is the annual essay contest we organize for middle schoolers and high schoolers across the nation. It's nationwide. I realize for three years now I've been asking these young students to write these essays, but I have never formally written one myself. So today, I'm going to take on the challenge I propose to those students every year and answer the topics for the essay questions that they had to do this year. The middle school students are asked, how do I be a good American? Everyone thinks they are, but what does that really mean? It means show up. One of the greatest mentors told me, Devin, the world belongs to those who show up. And boy, he was right. We need to become civically engaged, pick up litter, go to city and town hall meetings, interact with your elected officials, hold them accountable, hold yourself accountable, have presence, speak your concerns, offer ideas and insights. Don't add to the problem, but let's collectively work towards a solution. Vote. As a female standing here, I can tell you women before me had to fight for my right to vote. Their perseverance and courage allowed me a voice in the future of America. This goes for all minority populations. Take advantage of the tenacity of the generations before us who stood up for our rights. Don't let their hard work go unnoticed. Speak out against injustice. Celebrate, any, celebrate each other's accomplishments. Tolerate difference and guarantee that all citizens feel the benefits of American freedom. In order to preserve the American dream and to be good Americans, we as a general public must show up and be heard. The essay question proposed through the Voice of Democracy pro program asked the high school students, where do we go from here? That's a very loaded question to ask anyone. But high school students, they were ready for the challenge. So where do we go from here? I say, up. As Americans, when life knocks us down, let's land on our backs, because if we can look up, we can get up, and we can help each other up. It takes a village to raise a family. It also takes a village to build and reunite a country. To do this, we need to respect each other, our differences, and as a result, generate tolerance and learn from one another. We have the opportunity of a lifetime to make a change, which means nothing if we don't take advantage of it. We need to listen to each other. And by listen, I mean listen. Listen as hard as you want to be heard. Just sit back for a minute. Take in the perspective of others. You don't need to agree, you just need to listen. Take care of each other and be kind. Kindness is free. Free to give and free to receive. So start spreading it because the world needs more of it. Continue to support our veteran population. They need it more now than ever. I just read an article and the VFWs and American Legions lost over a million members in the past 10 years. That's 100,000 people per year. Veterans are the cornerstone of our country and fought so we could be here today. They are the 1% of the population that towed the line and selflessly devoted themselves to our freedom. If it wasn't for them, we couldn't be us. Engage them, support them, thank them. Let's go up together and as one, unite this country again. Before I finish, I just want to say hi to all my post friends over here from Akushnet Post 7239. <laughs> I love them and they've helped me so much, mentored me through being a commander. But I would like to give a special shout out to my dad, Paul Robitaille, and my uncle, Uncle Pat, and also my brother-in-law, who is uh, Brian Keeney, who couldn't be here today. They have mentored me and given me such help and dedication to our post that I can't, even, I can't even explain it. And I hope one day I can have 
emulate the leadership skills that they have taught me in the past three years. So thank you. <laughs> you guys are awesome. But thank you all so much for having me here today. This is always an honor. I love coming out here and talking to everybody. So let's keep the dream alive and work together. Thank you, Devin. I'd like to call up now Brad Fish, our veterans agent from Fairhaven, to read the mass proclamation. Thank you. Good morning, Fairhaven. Good morning, Brad. All right, there we go. Proclamation from the state of Massachusetts. Whereas since the Commonwealth's colony days, Thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. Whereas on November 11, 1918, the armistice was signed in the forest of the Champagne by the Allied nations in Germany ending World War I, the war to end all wars after four years of conflict, and whereas since that day, every November, people around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country. And whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And whereas in November 2021, the world will commemorate the 103rd anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 a.m., November 11, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11, 2021 to be Veterans Day. Thank you, Brad. I'd now like to call everybody to attention for the playing of taps. Rip, tap, up, present, off. Thank you all, and like Devin says, all you have to do is show up. And that proves your ability to be good citizens and patriots of this great country. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. I think I'm ready to, st to start the program. It looks like everyone's through. Can everybody hear me? You can barely hear me? Okay, can everyone hear me? Okay. I just want to let you know that Phil Beard is here. If you enjoyed that dinner, you can thank him because he provides the Senior Center with everything we need to have these kind of uh, events. So, Phil, thank you so much, Phil. We have a wonderful staff from Yep. Um, Hi, Joe. Me. Hello. But um, we've got a wonderful team here, and they've been here a long time working together. So they really, um, I think, will support everyone that participates. So. 
Please come visit with us. And they do a congregate meal Monday through Friday at 11.30. So all you have to do is call the senior center to reserve that, you know, uh, seat uh, so they know how much to order. And, um, yep, Monday through Friday, 11.30. All right. So um, to continue with the program, I want to thank um, Keith Sylvia and Bob Espindola from the Select Board. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy days because we know you're busy. Um, and, okay, so I'm going to um, start off with veterans who are here today. I'm gonna to read your name, your branch, and the number of years that you served. So, um, Miss Dorothea Machado, Navy, two and a half years. <laughs> William Anselmo, Army, six years. Down there. You can, you, if you want, just put your hand up if, you, if you'd like to. Uh, Howard Burt, Air Force slash Army, 24 years. <laughs> Joe Borelli. Civil War, oh no, oh, that, uh, no, that, uh, that was, that was Al Borges. I, I got them mixed up. Uh, no, Joe Borelli, Air Force, four years. Joseph Sylvia, Air Force, three years. Bob Cummings, Army, Two and a half years. Bob. Frank Barcelos, Army, two years. That's my dedicated van driver right there. Jack Oliveira, Army, two years. John Braz, Marines slash Army, nine years, six months. William LeBlanc, Air Force, four years. Norman Nadu, Air Force, four years, eight months. Was there something else? Was it Air Force and National Guard? Uh, Robert Hobson, Navy, six years. Roger Richard, Army, eight years. Ed Miller, Army Reserves, five years. Michael Voss, Navy, three years. There's Michael. Richard Evans, U.S. Coast Guard, six years. Merritt Smith, Naval Air, four years. Robert Costa, Army, eight years. And his beautiful wife, Ethel Costa, Navy, three years. Did I miss anyone? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, there are a lot less veterans here this year than in the past. So I just want to, you know, just keep in mind and, and send well wishes and good thoughts to the veterans who are not able to attend. They've either in maybe in nursing homes or um, just at home and not able to get around like they used to. So um, special thoughts and, and prayers go out to those folks. Um, so, I've been here 10 years. <laughs> and uh, this is my last Veterans Day celebration. So, um, it's, it's just bittersweet. Just give me a second. 
pull myself together here. Okay. So I looked back over the past 10 years that I've been here, and I pulled, uh, I pulled out all, I saved every Veterans Day celebration that, I, uh, that we, ha we had, and I looked through all the veterans' names, and I made a list of veterans who, from 10 years ago to today, today have passed away, who were here with us, no longer with us. So I would just like to read those names. Uh, most recently, and I mean like a week and a half ago, Marcel Barabi, his name was on the list to attend, Marcel Barabi. I don't have the branch in the years, but he's, he'll always be in my heart. And also most recently, um, Linda Meredith. Um, her husband, Terry, uh, came to me last week with a beautiful picture of her and we put it on our wall. So I am so honored to be able to have that on our wall and thank you, Terry, for that. Uh, Richard Trinidad, Jesse Fisher, Robert Govin, Manuel Cadero, Richard Santos, Pete Saroy, Al Borges. Henry Sylvia, Lionel DeLude, Fred Landry, Charles Mead, Leslie Trott, Ted Mack, Bob Silva, Roger DeManche, Mariano Meniz, Angelo Puente, Ernie Campos, Victor Oliveira, William Lee, Ernest Souza, Leonard Curran, Tony Freights, Georgia Ruda, Henry Ozluski, Gilly Alves, Abel Monero, Jerry Russo, Chan Hayward, Ed Crystal, Junior Carrero, Stanley Wojcik, and Steve Furtado. So, um, at this time, I'm, I'm going to ask Brad Fish to come up, and um, he's going to give you some good information and uh, let you know what's going on at the Veterans Office in Fairhaven. Here's Brad. Thanks, Ann. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm not going to get in front of the mic. I think I have a big enough mouth that everybody can hear me. Uh, that's what I've been told. So, uh, real quick. Uh, I spent 23 years in the military between the Marine Corps and the Army. I flew as a helicopter door gunner crew chief for 23 years. Uh, I got out of that doing that, went to the Postal Service, and now I'm a VSO. Right now in the town of Fairhaven, in all the towns of Massachusetts, I should say, is a thing called Chapter 115. Chapter 115 is a benefit that only Massachusetts has for their veterans or spouses of veterans. So it can go either way. You know someone that's a widow or a widower or whatever, they can get on Chapter 115 as long as they meet the financial criteria, which is single, I believe it's $1,930 a month. I'm asking the big boss. $1,930? And I believe it's $2,300 for if you're married with a spouse. But if you fall underneath those guidelines of income, you need to go see the veteran service officer in any town that you live in. I know we have people here from Dartmouth, Manapoisett, Marion. <coughs> you all have a veteran service officer, so go to them and they'll help you out. And Chapter 15 will give you extra money for fuel assistance, help pay your rent. Uh, you'll be on medical, we'll help pay your Blue Cross Blue Shield, your Medigap, whatever it is. So, but you have to fall underneath those criteria and you have to make, you have to have less than 8,000 or 12,000. 12, if 12000 if you're married in a savings account or 8000 if you're single. And that's pretty much the criteria to get in on Chapter 115. Most VSO offices, me and Jane, my administrative assistant's over there, she knows everything. She tells me what to do. <laughs> She's awesome. Uh, we also do federal claims. So any veteran that has a federal claim or has an issue that they can track back to when they were in the military, they need to go see a VSO. So... If you live in another town, 
Just look it up on the website or go to Town Hall and they'll be able to help you out. If you're from Fairhaven, you just need to call <coughs> and talk to either me or Jane and we'll help you out with whatever you need. We are doing a Veterans Day Parade this year. It's going to be kicking off at 9 a.m. on Thursday morning and it's going to go down Main Street all the way to uh, Fairhaven High School where we will raise the big flag. So anybody that wants to come out and see it or Ann Hashke has a bus that's going to be in the parade for any veterans that cannot march and want to join in on the fun. And I think that's pretty much it that I have. Oh, we actually have some cards, they said, but they're more like posters from St. Joseph's School. So Jane's going to walk around and pass those out to our veterans. They were done by the kids there in the fourth grade. So. Anybody have any questions for me? No, you just want me to shut up and sit down. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. Thanks, Brad and Jane. Oh, you know what I forgot? Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Real quick. Ann has a shine counselor here. But if you didn't know, anybody that's on Social Security, and if you're single and your total income is under $1,771 per month, you can get your Medicare Part B back every month. That $148.50 they take out of you. And I believe if you're married, your total income has to be under either $2,400 or $2,500. The form takes five minutes to fill out. It's very simple, but you will eventually get your 148.50 they take out of you for Medicare Part B. They do a great job. So any questions, call our office in Fairhaven or call your local VSO office from whatever town you're in. All right, I'm done. Or you can call here. Call and we can hook, yeah, we can hook you up with one of our, um, we have two Shine counselors. They are amazing. They're crazy busy right now because it's open enrollment, but. Um, so... Uh, I, I don't know if you remember in past years, but uh, Beacon Hospice did a program where they donated yarn and ladies um, crocheted Afghans and then the Afghans went back to Beacon for um, veterans in hospice and um, they, haven't, they haven't done that in a couple of years, but the ladies who were crocheting and knitting kept it going. And uh, so I just, I'd like to thank the following ladies. Um, for all their hard work because everyone's going home with um, all the veterans are going home with an Afghan today. I'll just show you real quick. So yeah, they're all different, but um, and they're big. So yeah, uh, all the veterans. Nice. Like, yeah, we had a big collection. By all means. Um, <laughs> We have a big collection of them, so I, I want to thank Diane Tappa, Judy Putri, Rosalie Hutchinson, Lillian DeRosia, Laura Hergenhan, Jane Brayton, and Nancy Reynolds and her friends. That's how she signed it, and friends. So thank you to those ladies. Uh, again, I, I want to thank Phil and Coastline all trust credit union thank you so much thank you so, oh, for everything all the years that you've helped us out with this um and and brad and um to wrap this up i'd like to read a poem it's a little long but it's it's really one of my favorite poems um I discovered it probably about 30 years ago. Actually, it was it was written in 1987, and it's called um, "A Soldier's Silent Night." You've probably heard it already, but just um, I'm going to read it because it's just really nice, and it it kind of goes with the "Twas the Night Before Christmas" thing. So, um, "Twas the Night Before Christmas." He lived all alone in a one-bedroom house made of plaster and stone. I had come down the chimney with presents to give and to see just who in this dwelling did live. As I looked all around, a strange sight to see, no tinsel, no presents, not even a tree, no stockings on the mantel, just boots filled with sand. On the wall hung pictures of a far distant land. Medals and badges, awards of every kind, 
A sobering thought came alive in my mind. This house was different. It was dark. It was dreary. I had found the home of a soldier. I could see that most clearly. The soldier lay sleeping, silent, alone, curled up on the floor in his one-bedroom home. His face was so gentle, room in such disorder, not at all how I pictured a U.S. soldier. Was this the hero of whom I just read, curled up on a poncho, a floor for a bed? Then I realized the other families that I saw this night. Out there lies the soldier, soldiers who are willing to fight. In the morning around the world, children would play. Grown-ups would celebrate a bright Christmas day. But they all enjoyed freedom each month through the year because of soldiers like the one lying here. I couldn't help but wonder how many lie alone on a cold Christmas Eve in lands far from home. The very thought brought, tears, brought a tear to my eye and I dropped to my knees and I started to cry. The soldier awakened. I heard his rough voice. Santa, don't cry. This life is my choice. I fight for freedom. I don't ask for more. My life is my God, my country, my core. The soldier rolled over and drifted to sleep. I couldn't control it. I, couldn't, I continued to weep. I watched. I kept watch for hours, so silent and still, as both of us shivered from the cold night's chill. I didn't want to leave him on that cold, dark night, this guardian of honor so willing to fight. Then the soldier rolled over with a voice soft and pure. He whispered, carry on, Santa. It's Christmas Day, all secure. One look at my watch, and I knew he was right. Merry Christmas, my friend. May God bless you this night. I just like that poem. So in closing, thank you, all, all the veterans here today, all the veterans who couldn't be here today, and all the veterans who were here for so many years uh, who are no longer here. Um, I love my wall. I love my veterans. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and um, we'll keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you.